Before we let you go, we have a few more things we'd like to talk to you about. Let's say we have some footage that has had its pull down removed, and now we need to mask it. Our footage is at 23976. We'll make a comp at 23976 and mask it in there. And I'll verify that this comp is indeed at 23976. So now we've keyframed a mask shape, so there's a unique keyframe every frame of the input video. And you see the mask perfectly follows this pendulum. Life is good. If you were to continue working at 23976 for the remainder of your project, there'd be no problems. However, if you need to combine this with other video footage, or for some other reason need to render at 2997 interlaced, you do have a potential problem. Let's go ahead and go back to the start of this comp, and open up a comp where we've put our masked pendulum in front of some video footage. To simulate what's going to happen on the render, I've set this comp's frame rate to 59.94, because that's the field rate of interlaced video. And if indeed we're going to render this like a normal video project, that's how fast this footage is going to be sampled while it's being rendered. As I hit page down and step through the fields of this footage, watch the leading edge of this pendulum. See a little bit of black fringe appear here? More of a fringe? Now the pendulum jumps and catches up. Fringe, catches up. Fringe, fringe, catches up. What we're seeing is that that mask is actually interpolating at the field rate of 5994, even though the footage that it's masking only has a unique frame every 23976. This mismatch causes a lot of problems. Well, there's an easy way to cure this. Go back to the original comp where you did your masking and do one of the two following things. One, you can either change all of these keyframes to hold keyframes. That way, the mask won't slip even though you're sampling at a faster speed. A slicker way is to open up the composition settings. Command K on Mac, Control K on Windows. Click on the Advanced tab and click this new checkbox, Preserve Frame Rate. What that says is, is when you nest this comp into another composition, this particular comp is going to honor its own frame rate no matter what happens. And that, in essence, locks in the animation that you have in this pre-comp. So enable Preserve Frame Rate, click OK, then go back to our comp and see how that composite works out now. As we hit Page Down, you'll see that we're only updating the mask and the pendulum together. No ugly black fringe. And this is the fix for slipping mask problems like that. Next, let's talk about a situation where you have some footage, you've removed the pull down, you want to use it in a normal 2997 video composition, and you want to slow down your pull down footage. Well, you've got a chance of having some pretty bad motion result. The reason is, is that with pull down footage, your underlying frame rate, 23976 or 24 frames a second, is pretty darn slow. If you slow that down even further, and then you render that out to 2997 interlaced, you, you may see some pretty ugly staggering in the footage. The way around that is to use some very special numbers whenever you stretch, namely multiples of 80% stretch. And I've gone ahead and built some up here. 80% is the magic number. That's the ratio between 30 and 24 frames a second. If you go ahead and stretch your footage by 80, 160, 240, 320, 400%, and so forth, you're going to get really even motion because you'll have a consistent number of frames of input for every frame of output, and your motion will look a lot better. If you happen to be using a program that's based on speed instead of stretch, those numbers are 125, 62 and a quarter, 4167, 31.25. You can get a calculator out and figure it out pretty easily. Now, there is a trick to get around this. After Effects 7 is introduced a feature called Pixel Motion, which intelligently interpolates in between frames. There's also several plugins that do this. So let me show you that in action. In After Effects 7, you want to go ahead and enable frame blending for the footage. But rather than just clicking once, you want to click twice. That invokes pixel motion, which is a very smart algorithm that tries to morph in between frames when the frame rates don't match. I'll go ahead and enable frame blending for this comp. And now as I hit page down, After Effects is going to try to create brand new frames in between. If I hadn't done this, I'd have staggered motion again. Now, Pixel Motion is pretty good, and it comes free with After Effects 7, but there's third-party solutions I prefer. My favorite is a plugin called Twixter from a company called Revision Effects. Now, Twixter comes with very thorough documentation, and I'm not going to go over it here, but the one thing to keep in mind about Twixter is that it works on speed rather than stretch. So if you're trying to get footage to run at half speed, you want to enter 50% instead of a stretch of 200%. 
However, I find the Twister gives me really smooth motion. And it's always the first thing I use whenever I need to time stretch footage, particularly when there's a big mismatch, such as putting pull down into a video comp. And that wraps up many, many different subjects and ideas that all have to relate to 3 2 pull down and dealing with pull down footage in a video world. Hopefully, you understand it better now and you know how to work with it better. The results can look pretty darn good, as long as you handle it right. Take care. See you later.